Okay, so you're looking to move to the great state of Florida, and you're wondering, should I rent or should I buy a home and moving to this state? I can tell you it's a question that so many people had. Heck, even I had it when I was initially moving to this state. I can tell you it's not easy, and in this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know about whether you should rent or whether you should buy when moving to Florida, because it's not as simple as what saves you money. Let's go. <music> What's up everyone, my name is Cameron Hodge. On this channel, I talk about making the move to and living in Orlando, Florida, and Florida in general. So, if you're looking to get information about what it's like living in Orlando, Florida, or Florida in general, then this is the channel for you. I drop videos every single week. But while I love dropping these videos for you to help you make making the move out here, what I love even more being a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Florida is helping you make those plans and make that move out here. So this number popping up below is how you can get a hold of me, call, text, email, doesn't matter what you do. I am here to help you with making that move because it can be chaotic, it can be crazy, and I want to make sure that you have the best experience when moving out here because it really is a great state and great area. Area, so I want to be able to help you in making that move. All right, so getting into it now. Should you rent or should you buy when making the move to Florida? Like, oh my God, so many agents are just like, oh well, you know, buying's better than renting. Yeah, okay. Yes, do I believe that? Yes, real estate is awesome. But I also believe at the same time, just because you own a home does not mean it's an asset for you. Whoa, I said it. I know. But what I'm getting at is like when you're moving, I think most of us are moving across the country, right? And even I consider rent, even me and my family considered renting when we first made the move out here. And the reason for that was we didn't know where we wanted to live. And when you don't know where you want exactly you want to live, like maybe it isn't best to buy somewhere. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you can't buy something, even if you think you're going to end up moving in the future. Like I've run, especially in the military, like I would own homes and rent it out plenty of times, and I still love to own rentals. Now, depending where you live in Florida, it changes by a long shot. So what I'm going to do, I think, is what I'm going to cover first is I'm going to cover what the average rent here in Florida is, like why you might want to rent, and then I'm going to get into like the purchasing things and stuff like that, and like what your rough cost is, and like compare the two at the end. So, renting in the entire state between in all rentals the average rent is about 1700 per month now the reason i people focus which the national average is about 1400 and change like i don't care where you go state florida's not the cheap state anymore clearly right um but i will tell you at the same time is that like that's still a lot of money and like that's also including condos townhomes and single family right like it's it's not including like just single family by itself which in probably any major metropolitan area that you're probably moving to, I will probably bet that it's going to be a lot higher than that. I know here in Orlando and Central Florida, it is definitely higher than that to, to rent a single family home, especially if it has a pool or anything like that. So it really what it comes down to is you need to make sure that you're comfortable paying that much. Now, if you're just like, maybe it's just like there's one person or there's two of you, maybe it's like whatever. And you're like, I, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I just want to be able to get into the state and start researching and traveling around once I get there because maybe you have a job, maybe you like you have to rush in a minute. Um, but I'll also tell you that just like the rest of the country, rentals have been very, very competitive, especially in Central Florida. But I, I've heard the same with my partners in like Jacksonville and Miami. It's just, it's chaos, right? So a lot of people, we, we had actually like several people that reach out to us. It happens all the time where they're like, hey, I'm going to move to Orlando and you know, I don't know where I want to go. And also they're like, hey, by the way, we signed an, a lease agreement and now we're renting. Nothing wrong with that. But what you need to understand is, is like I say, like you're like, oh, 12 months, within 12 months, I want to be able to buy a home. Well, depending on your situation with why you're moving here, like it might just be better for you to buy a home. But I understand you, if you don't know exactly whether it's Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville, Miami, it doesn't matter where you're moving to in Florida. Like if you don't know the exact suburb and area you want to live in, I, I get it. I get where you want to rent because you don't want to be caught in something in that area. It makes sense. I get it. But you got to make sure that the rents, you can afford the rent in those areas, you know? So like obviously 1700 average rent, nationals 1400, like it's a little bit more than national average. But I will tell you that, especially if you're looking for like good neighborhoods in Orlando or any major city, like you're gonna end up paying way more than that in rent. So don't think that's like a solid number to live off of because it's probably gonna be higher than that or it could be lower depending where you're moving to. Maybe you aren't moving to a major metropolitan area. Hey, I don't know. But what I am saying is you have to make sure you're cognizant that that's not even including utilities as well. That's just rent cost, right? So make sure you understand that before making the move out here and when you're weighing these two options. Now, obviously, age old, like obviously you're not building equity, blah, 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 all that stuff. Look, I, I'm not gonna be ignorant and say that rent, no one should ever rent. Personally, I don't like to rent. 
but for you, it might make sense. And there's nothing wrong with renting for a year or two years if you really just don't know if you even wanna stay in the state. Now, that's rentals, very brief idea about it. You know, and also let's be honest, and when you rent a home, like you're not having to deal with the maintenance, you're not having to deal, now it all depends on your specific lease agreement and where you're living and all that kind of chaos. But, you know, I think most rentals, like you're not gonna have to really worry about all that stuff. Now, obviously it always comes down to, hopefully you have a good landlord. Is your maintenance company good? Like all this stuff, are you just going into a big apartment complex or are you gonna be working with a mom and pop who just owns a home locally in town or the city? all that plays into it and you know if you if you're watching this and you've rented before you probably already get the idea of how it works what to do um at the same time you know you have to make sure you understand you know if that's something that's a good trade-off for you and you know i think for many it might be a good trade-off now i have had reach outs before talking about section eight look I get it, like moving states is already expensive enough and a lot of people do look for that rental assistance when they come here to Florida. Um, well, I'll tell you just like Section 8, I think everywhere I've ever been where I've had people bring up Section 8, there's always a wait list. I have people that, you know, I know people that need Section 8 in order to qualify for rent and I have people that actually will buy homes in order to increase the amount of homes that are offered to Section 8 and I know both sides of the coin here. And look, I get it. like. It, but there's always a wait list. So don't think if you that's what you're banking on, be aware that there's probably gonna be a wait list no matter where you move. Cause that's like, that's just the whole country. Everywhere I've ever lived, no matter what state it is, there's always a section eight wait list. There just is. So be aware that that's gonna be running down that road if you do look to rent and run into those issues. Like, look, like it or hate it, if you need it, whether you're renting or buying, like you're gonna need some kind of cash and money, whether it's for a deposit, the first month rent, down payment, it doesn't matter. Like, guess what? You're going to need some cash. So if you are looking to move to Florida, make sure no matter what option you choose, like you have some kind of savings saved up. Also, if you don't have employment lined up, like keep, be aware that that could hurt you on both sides of the coin. So make sure you're prepared for that. Now, getting into the purchasing side, why would someone want to purchase if they're like, Cameron, like I don't necessarily know where to live. Okay. There's, I have a, a ton of options for this one. Yeah. Clearly like over like, you know, a 10 year span, like you're going to be way more financially ahead owning a home. Now that set aside, should you do it? Well, a lot of factors. I can tell you, we did it when we moved here. Now we did make an initial discovery trip. So I don't care what you're doing. Like depending, like I think a lot of people, I think the average is at least 12 months out between moving when people reach out to me and the team. And really that's enough time for you to potentially take, I don't care if it's a weekend trip, a two week trip, whatever you can do, make sure you come out here and you travel the area. You're either gonna find out if Florida is for you or not. Or if you were like, hey, I'm looking at Orlando, hey, I'm looking at Tampa, Jacksonville, Miami, and all of a sudden you go there and you're like, ooh, I don't like this that much. Make sure you make that discovery trip and come and find out. Now, if you are looking to make a discovery trip to Central Florida, hey, reach out to us as well because I love to give like a little sheet, those like little areas for you to discover. Like, hey, Cameron, I'm looking at these areas. Fantastic. Here's some key points for you to visit there. And any of my partners in any of the other cities can give you the same exact thing. But it helps you when you come to make that discovery trip to try to minimize the amount of time you're wasting. Because like, guess what? When you're coming out for a discovery trip, it's unfortunately, it's not always about vacation. It's to make sure you have a plan in mind to make sure you can get done and find out where you want to live. Now, you know, also at the same time, if you are concerned, like, well, what if I can, what if I buy a home and I'm like, why would I want to buy a home? If I'm like, I don't even know if within two years I want to live here. Look, to be honest with you, rents have gone up substantially in the state. And obviously it always depends on your situation, where you're living. But even with like all the chaos in the world right now, with like this pending recession and all that stuff, guess what? Home prices are still expected to go up maybe a couple percent on average for the next five years, right? Like, there's still not enough homes being built, even here in Central Florida, still competitive. Um, but I will tell you that way people are like, well, I'll rent because buying homes are still competitive in Central Florida. Not always. Like higher rates have definitely started to soften certain things. But at the same time, guess what? A lot of people are saying the same thing. Like, oh, rates are high. I'm not going to buy. Guess what? Still not enough rentals. So no matter what, like it's just the crazy times we live in. You're going to be fighting that issue no matter which way you go. Now, I'll tell you, like we chose to actually, now we built a home when we moved out here because we knew we wanted what we couldn't have in like say California where we were coming from initially. But at the same time, we were originally going to just like look into buying a resale home. And like, look, it's, I played the game enough to know that 
we made sure we bought and well built in this case but we would have done the same thing when we were purchasing in an area that's expanding and growing the path of progress as you would say so if you are looking to purchase a home it's like even if you're like well i'm considering like 12 to 24 months i might not even want to stay in the state or maybe i want to change cities look if you buy in the right area you kind of hedge yourself a little bit against inflation because like i said you're buying to like you know super out in the boons right like away from like orlando in this case but any city to where it's probably going to be forever until it's actually like major businesses moving to that area like you're probably not going to be as safe you know if prices were to drop i'm not saying they are but and keep in mind that if you buy in the right area guess what you could you definitely put yourself in a stronger position where people want to live so keep in mind there's a lot that plays into this when looking to purchase the home now i told you the average rent not including utilities in florida is 1700 now obviously buying a home a little more complicated every situation is specifically different but in all of florida the rough average home price right now is about 397,000. now hold up can you find cheaper yes now can you find more expensive absolutely excuse me but at the same time realize that we're just going off of the average here it's average rent we're going off of the average price and by the way that average price i gave you is also including like condos and townhomes like everything just conglomerated together so if you're looking for a home home you know, to be fair, like in Central Florida and Orlando, that's about, you know, I think last month it was about 405000 is what the average home price between Orlando and also Tampa came out to. Definitely cheaper homes than that, and depending on what size of home you need, but we're not going to go into that right now. We're just going to go off with the average. So keep in mind, obviously, when you go to buy a home, you go into, as I pull up my numbers here, you go into the realm of, you know, have to deal with other expenses and costs which you know in the short term look you are definitely spending more money owning a home and i'll be honest with you it might not be the situation for most now depending on what state you're coming from or owning a home like we even came from california like you're probably gonna be surprised because the average insurance is what really kills people here in the state of florida because of the hurricanes and all that stuff now i can tell you like it always depends on what company you get insurance through like what house you're getting because like every home is assessed differently in this state so be aware that that's usually the silent killer for most people the average property tax is about 1.16 percent of the purchase price which is barely like 0 0.02 above the national average so not much crazy you know in california you definitely have lower property taxes in that but more expensive homes so be aware that those costs are going to be differently now at that average price and going off of super average rates right now assuming you're putting five percent down so obviously unlike you know first and last month rent for a rental now you're going to be putting about you know almost twenty thousand down a little bit more than that to get like that average priced home let's say like twenty five thousand. just we're going to be super conservative here like that is a downfall because maybe you don't have that in the short term Fair enough maybe you don't want to purchase because of that reason now i'll tell you like it doesn't necessarily mean you have to put that much down like i had another video talking about the hometown hero program which is a program that can help you with down payment assistance there's a lot of other programs out there to help you with that so don't think that this is just a said and done thing like it's look this is just general numbers for you to be aware of if you are considering weighing these two options now i will also tell you that you know adding all that together the average you know insurance price which is a little over two grand for the entire state now i can tell you like obviously my home homeowner's insurance is not that much but we also built a new home that's made out of steel and concrete so guess what insurance is going to be lower than that actually it would even be cheaper than what we pay which is around like 1300 but we have flood insurance because well hey what are you gonna do we're next to a body of water definitely paying that flood insurance so be aware that that is super a general average number you definitely get lower than that it doesn't mean you're spending this much but hey the facts are the facts when coming from the Department of Real Estate for the state. Now, overall, you'd be paying, not including utilities, about $2,700 per month. Now, that number is super vague. I will tell you that right now. Rents, rents are going to be pretty consistent. This size home, beds, bath is how much you're going to pay. When it comes to homes, when was the home built? That's going to flood, you know, is the roof new? How old's the roof? It's going to, like, all that affects your insurance, which affects everything ounce, purchase price, how much you're putting down on the property. Like, oh my gosh, I go crazy with how that number is. But we'll just say, let's just say, for just the sake of it, you're paying an extra $1,000 a month. Hey, you know what? In the short term, short term, you might not have that. Maybe you don't have the cash. But I will tell you that if you, 
even if you're in the mindset of like, well, I'm probably gonna be leaving in two years. I don't know if I wanna stay here. Look, it doesn't mean you can't buy in the right area. Cause even at that purchase price, I can tell you here in Central Florida, you can still buy a home that leaves you in a pretty good solid finance position, whether you wanna rent it out or Airbnb it, assuming you buy in the right area. That's a whole nother discussion or anything like that. Like you still put yourself in a solid financial position. And really you should do that whenever you're buying a home. Unless of course you're buying your dream home and you're like, look, this is this is what I want. This is I'm not gonna do anything else with the property for the next 30 years. Hey, power to it. We help people with that too. But be aware that, you know, did I personally chose to actually purchase, in this case, build? Yes, I did. Does it mean everyone's doing this? No, because let's say you're 100% disabled veteran and there are also a couple other property tax exemptions for the state. And, you know, definitely talk to a CPA about that. But, you know, you can potentially, if you're a 100% disabled veteran, you don't pay any property taxes. And like I said, there's a couple other that will reduce that. So it's such a vague number. But at the same time, like wrapping everything up, you need to be aware, like, you know, in the short term, maybe you are just testing this out for 12 months. And you're like, I don't even know if I want to stay in the state. If you're that on the fence, hey, rent, sign a 12 month lease and experience everything there has to offer because you might not like it. But if you are looking to play the long game and you are looking to build that equity or just have something you own to where you can control what happens with that set of that property, hey, owning would probably be a good route. Look, obviously, yes, I think financially it's a fact over 10 years or five years plus, like you will be more financially ahead owning a property because your money's not going to thin air. It's paying down the property as prices appreciate even at like, excuse me, even at like 3%. But I'm not ignorant to the fact that like it doesn't make sense for everyone. Like maybe you should rent. If you are like not sure if you want to stay here, hey, go ahead and rent. But I'll employ you that if you are looking to purchase something, you need to make sure that you start building that plan now to make sure that you, hey, can you even afford it? And can you afford the areas you want to live in? Because maybe you can afford the rent, but maybe you can't afford to buy. It's such a complicated situation, which is why if you are looking to move to Orlando or the Central Florida area, or heck, even if you're anywhere other in the state, I'm happy to have a conversation with you because when we initially made it out here, it was chaos. And I love helping people build those plans to make that move out here because that really was one of the best things I think we ever did. So this number popping up below is how you can get a hold of me. Call, text, email, doesn't matter what you do. I'm always available, ready to help you make those plans of moving to Central Florida, Orlando, or just Florida in general. So hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.